Welcome, welcome, welcome to the dungeon, everybody. My name is Robin, and today what we're going to be doing, we are going to take a trip to Italy. And anytime I think about Italy, I am always reminded of the fascinating cane work that they have pretty much invented and wrote the book on. I have never seen such fabulous cane work as I have in Italian glass. Today I'm going to be focusing on the filigrana cane. This cane has a beautiful double twist to it. So I'm going to show you how it's made and how I use it in a bead. If you have never had any previous um, cane making experience, this will be a good video to watch so you'll get an idea of what the process is all about. And um, yeah. Okay, so with that said, I hope you all enjoy this video and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time in the dungeon. I'm gonna start out with this little tiny piece of Balatini cane. And we'll talk about this in another video, but since I have it, I am going to just twist this up a little bit and use this to embellish a little bit more of the bead that I'm gonna make. And if you have any little bits of cane like this, it's easy to be able to twist it up by just using uh, your glass as a punty on both sides and pulling it out a little bit. But really what we're here to talk about <laughs> is the filigrana cane or the latticino. And I'm gonna start this cane out by building up a slightly large center of clear. I want this twist to be on the, to appear as if it's on the outside of the cane. And it is on the outside. I'm just covering up slightly with a little bit more clear. So it's the filigrana that has the outside twist. And I'm gonna go ahead and start that by adding white on two sides of my little bit of clear there. And I'll just keep swiping it down, building it up as I go. I want a nice even amount on both sides. Then once I have that done, I'm going to go ahead and soften it a little bit in the flame and coat the whole thing in a final layer of clear. This will really help everything to kind of seal itself off. I always add a little bit extra to the bottom. And what I want to make sure here is that where it is being, where the attachment is right now to that clear glass, I don't want that to fall off. So I want to gently start to compress that area down a little bit. It will make things a lot easier in the long run. And I use my marble mold just to round it out somewhat and to get kind of like a football shape. Things tend to pull out much easier when you have a wider center than you do edges. So here you see I'm trying to just gently make everything a little longer and the sides sloping down into each end. And now here, after heating everything up as much as I can, everything feels real good, and I'm going to start pulling this out very slowly. I can feel the, kind of like there's a toughness to the clear glass as opposed to the white glass that you can feel when you pull this out. So don't be deceived and pull it out too fast. You want a nice, slow, meticulous pull and twist on both ends as you do this. And once you have enough, go ahead and take that off, set it aside, and we'll use it later on. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and start this bead out. I am using a black base. It's probably about an inch on the mandrel, about an inch worth of glass. Anytime I'm making 
the base bead for something like this. I will do my best to make sure it looks as nice as I, I can get it. So if I think I need to add a little bit more to one end or the other, I'll do that and roll it out. And don't forget to very gently, very gently press those edges down. If you press them down or roll them right there on the marvering pad too much, yeah, the bead release might break. So be careful. Anyway, here we are putting on the filigrana and I just have the bead kind of preheated in a little area where I want the cane to go and then I'll heat up the tip of the cane and very gently kind of as I'm working the flame down the bead I'm also kind of rocking it back and forth too very gently everybody may have a, a different aspect or take on how they lay cane down on top of a bead I don't necessarily in this one I didn't want to make perfect lines. I wanted kind of a funky twist to it. And here you see I'm adding the uh, Bellatini cane right there. Ooh, I almost said it with an Italian accent. Bellatini. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, guys, so don't quote me. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to finish adding my cane here. You know, when I take the cane off from the other end, I'm doing it very, very gently so not to ruin the pattern of the cane at the very edge of the bead. Any kind of base color is going to look fabulous with this pattern. Okay, now before we start adding our massive amount of clear, <laughs> we want to just heat everything up very slowly and make sure that there aren't any deep gaps in between the cane. And because it's a long bead, you want to make sure you're not just focusing all your heat in the center. You really need to get that heat on both sides, especially when it comes to something like this, where there's a lot of texture going on that you want to smooth out. You want to focus that heat on the edges, but not too much because you don't want to um, you know, fry your bead release either. Once it's nice and smooth, we'll go ahead and start to add the clear. Make sure that you do clean the end of your cane off if it's a cut edge. You don't want to get any bubbles on your first swipe. And, you know, even when you see the final piece, there's a lot of minute, very tiny bubbles that you see, but the camera is so close up, you're not going to see all that detail unless you're looking at it very, very close. So don't worry about trapping any air bubbles. Sometimes I think it looks really cool, and it's the sign of a handmade piece. Sometimes there's bubbles. Just don't worry about it. So I'm going to <laughs> just heat everything up and smooth it out. And now I'm going to add another layer of clear. I wanted this piece to be very, very optic optically um, interesting. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. I just wanted the optics to really showcase the cane work. And I think I did a pretty good job. And the way that I achieved it is through this very slow buildup of clear. So you see how I'm going from a kind of like a tubular shape to more of a rounded shape because I have a lot of clear and that's allowing everything to soften into a really nice shape. Finally, I'm going to add these big clear dots all over this piece. These are so much fun to make, especially when you have a bead that has interesting detail like this that you want to show off. Because these all become little tiny magnifiers. It's really cool. 
But the way I get this very specific look is not just to stop here. I'm gonna take this a little bit further and make it uh, slightly thicker. And I do this by slowly cooling the bead down. If I just cool the whole bead down without pausing here and there, things just tend to overheat too much to the inside of the bead. I just wanna really heat the outside and smooth it down just enough to where I still have some bumps but I have a nice kind of platform for this next round of dots that I'm gonna do. And this is the final round of dots, I promise. <laughs> Just adding a few more here and there. I'm gonna heat this little guy up and we're all finished. I hope you guys enjoy this as much as I did making it. And we'll see you guys next time in the dungeon.